Hello everybody and welcome back to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler and this week we are getting into the Guilds of Ravnica spirit. Playing a guild anyways. We're playing Is It Wizards Guilds of Ravnica. Not out on Magic Online quite yet, but we're getting into getting into the swing of things. Excited to go back to Ravnica. Excited to play Is It Wizards for you this week. So this week we played against Tron, we played against Blue Moon, we played against Blue White Control. We had a big subsection of the format and had a lot of fun uh, seeing both the strengths and the weaknesses of this blue-red wizards deck that has put up some 5-0s recently on Magic Online. So, this is Mighty Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to do the deck tech at the end, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the games now, if you're ready. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Here we go, Mighty Modern. We're going to play some Is It Wizards this time around. So, let's go ahead and get things started off here with just a Grim Lava Mancer. Uh, so, this deck has been 5 0 some leagues recently. Um, I believe Jeff Hoogland played it to a top 8 finish at an SCG Open uh, a couple months ago. The sex kind of been making the rounds, and as we wait for um, Guilds of Ravnica to hit the uh, the standard queues, this seemed like the perfect time to play this. So, actually, you're going to get the rare Grim Lava Mancer beatdown here. Hold up, Mana Leak, pass the turn. Our opponent just on Flooded Strand didn't crack it on the instep either, which is interesting. But, okay, fair enough. Well, I guess it's... Okay, they're going to crack it in our upkeep. Sure, I guess. Seems fine. Let's see what they want to do here. Nothing. Okay, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and play a land uh, and pass. Even attack here. The question is whether or not we want to fire up the Muta Vault. Uh, but I don't think I do. Honestly, I think I'm just going to flash the Nimble Obstructionist in on instep. Actually, just to give us a flyer. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you do that. Maybe you just play the... It's really sweet when you get to cycle this and catch an ability with it, but sometimes just uh, just playing through on flyer is pretty good. Especially considering our opponent is likely sitting on some sort of removal over here. Looks like we can just go ahead and fetch out a basic island. Or I say removal. Counter spells is what the most likely is, but uh, depending on what they do, if they use it here, we can fire up the Muta Vault next time around and still have Mana Leak open, which I like. I like quite a bit, and it's just going to resolve. Interesting. All right, in our upkeep, they're going to play Vendillion Click. Well, I'm just going to Mana Leak that thing. This works out pretty well. We get to Mana Leak the Click. We get to attack with the Muta Vault. Uh, we get to get in for six here, which is pretty nice considering how much burn is in our deck. And then we get to untap with Snapcaster Mana Leak open. Now, our opponent does have a chance here. We did tap out. They get to do something. Uh, but what are they going to do? That's the question. Looks like they're just going to die. All right, so... Mono blue playing Vendillion Click, huh? I have no idea what's going on over there, but I guess this is probably good. Um, dispels seem pretty good here. Like I said, don't know exactly what we're looking for, but, uh, hmm, okay. We can go ahead and cut a Burst Lightning, I think. Burst Lightning's pretty good, but we have a lot of burn already. You know what? We actually should cut some Soul Scar Mages. They're fine. Um, it's crazy. Of all the cards I didn't think would make the jump to Modern for Standard. Soul Scar Mage is up there on that list, that's for sure. But you know what? It's a wizard. It's got prowess. It can get pretty big. Helps you do, deal with big stuff. All right, I'm also going to go ahead and cut the... Uh, <laughs> as much as I love it, I'm going to cut the Adalys here against the uh, the counter spell deck or the doing whatever they are. Uh, I do like Adalys, but it's a little better in combo-ish matchups where you just need to apply a bunch of pressure. And to be honest, I, I don't know what we're up against. I don't know if it's some sort of weird combo deck. Um, I'm unsure, <laughs> but I guess it's probably maybe just Blue Moon or something, but they didn't draw mountains. I don't know. I don't know, but that's all right. We'll give it a go here in game two. Let's see what we get to start off with this time around. That hand was pretty nice last game. We could have played differently if our opponent was playing creatures too and just started using the Lava Mancer. Uh, all right, I'm into this. We get to <laughs> mention Soul Scar Mage. Here we go. With Opt. Okay, so they do have red mana. I just have no idea what was up with that first game. I'm just going to go ahead and shock ourselves, I think, here. Seems fine, at least from what I know. Not exactly a scary threat, but you know what? It is something. We can Opt in our main phase here and uh, get in for two damage if we really want. And keep up Spell Snare. We could also just play Lava Manzer and keep up Spell Snare. I'm not sure. Alright, let's see what they do. All right, they're going to braid our creature. Are we in the mirror and we just didn't know it? Is that actually a possibility? I guess it could be. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and play the Lava Mancer here. Pass with uh, Spell Snare and or Opt Up, whichever we prefer, really. Or just activate Lava Mancer. Well, no, no, it has so many sickness. But 
Uh, it is a wizard, so we also even have access to uh, Lightning Bolt here. Opponent's just going to miss a land drop and do nothing, though. Which means I'm just going to take an island and opt. Now I might as well just sit behind this mana leak if it's going to go like this. I don't think I need that. Probably find another land here no matter what we do. Hey, look at that. It's a counterspell. Counterspell in modern. We did it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play this and just pass the turn. Shocking ourselves. I mean, we're giving it away, but that's fine, to be honest, I think. I can flash in the Nimble Obstructionist if I need to. Yeah, we really are just in the mirror. Interesting. They just had no creatures in game one, I guess? I'm not sure. But I have I have Counterspell. I have a lot of... I have just basically everything open right here. My opponent's going to do nothing, huh? So I'm going to go for the uh, Nimble Obstructionist. Just got to put pressure on him. We have all these reactive spells here, but if we're not doing him any damage, it just doesn't really matter. So uh, we'll go ahead and run out the Obstructionist and see what happens. Oh no, Staticaster? Uh-oh. Well, that's a pretty good one, and now that I know what we're up against, we can play Staticaster too. Uh, good news is, it gets their, they get their pick, they can kill the Obstructionist, which is what I assume they're going to do. Yep, okay. Well, at least I can kill it with Wizard's Lightning now. Ooh, we can even play Delver after that. Play a Delver, keep up Grim Lava Mancer, plus keep up Spell Snare here. So not all the counter spells kept up, but not bad, I guess. I mean, that Caster was just always going to be a beating. Not much we can do about that. So they're going to Snapcaster Opt here. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, Spell Snare this, I guess. Snapcaster or Braid, rather, is what I meant. Now, maybe it's wrong to Spell Snare this. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it makes their Snapcaster worse. It doesn't make it useless, but it makes it a lot worse. When they can't abrade. Now I could have let him go for the abrade. And then spell snare the abrade. Um, and it would have basically been the same thing here. Uh, in that they had a snapcaster mage in play. Um, but we wouldn't have got the dispel out of their hand. And they wouldn't have cast op to be fair. But we wouldn't have got the dispel out of the hand either. And now I can just uh, kill the snapcaster here. with. If we have the right card on top. We're in business. A oh, wizard's lightning. I would like to reveal that. Alright so yeah. See there we go. We get to... Transform our Delver here. We get to destroy the Snapcaster Mage. Our opponent has four cards in hand, and we get to attack with an Insectile Aberration with uh, multiple counter spells back up, although only one a turn. But to be honest, our opponent's actually a little... Well, there we go. They have red mana. I was going to say, with only one red mana there, um, they actually were kind of in a weird spot. But now with the second one, now they can actually fling two spells at our Snapcast, or our Devil to get rid of it. Or they're just going to anger the gods, huh? Well, I guess I have to mana leak it. I don't like where this is going. I feel like my opponent has a counterspell of their own here. Which, yep. All right. Well, my opponent's on to two cards in hand. Same as us. We are out of a board, though. Okay, well, it's a weird game, but I guess our opponent's going to have a hard time resolving anything. All right, there's a Delver. We'll give this a shot. They might just be Blue Moon. Remanded, huh? Uh, sure. Kind of just want to deny him the card draw, but I'm just going to let the Remand resolve. Try it again here. And just try to dispel something later. Wow, a second Remand, huh? Um... Well, I can dispel the remand to deny them a card. Or I can just replay Delver. It depends how val highly we value the dispel. But I think given that we're going to be tapped out no matter what we do this turn, unless we just choose not to play it, I just want to go ahead and deny them the card. Now, they're actually pretty hard-pressed with three cards in hand, uh, which is a lot to, to kill this. Which, they you know, they probably can. Yeah, Snapcaster. Yeah, their Snapcasters have been the difference here, but we can hit our own. Yeah, Snapcaster, Abrade, our Delver, huh? Okay. Yeah, the Snapcasters have 100% been the difference this time around. I guess I'm going to have to go for the Tap Out Wizard's Lightning here. I'll take the hit, see if they do anything else we care about, but... 
All right, well, we'll give it a shot. If they waste a counter spell stopping this, I guess that's fine. We can take a few more hits from this. All right, that's something. I mean, we're kind of basically in this uh, this weird spot where both players, they're ahead. Their Snapcasters are the difference in the game, so they have four cards in hand, we have two. And they have more lands than us. But all that said, you know, they have to have good cards. Well, that's a pretty good one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, counter that. I'm going to Wizards Retort this thing. And if they fight back, I can Dispel. Looks like they are going to fight back, one way or another here. Oh, please be a Cryptic Command. Oh, that's beautiful. Cryptic Command, last card, Dispel your Cryptic Command. Absolutely. All right, and now we might have a shot to turn this thing around. So our opponent has one card in hand and nothing on board. We get to untap. Uh, and I mean, attack with our Mute Evolve, if nothing else. Well, unfortunately, that is all we can do. Imagine if we just drew a Snapcaster or something there. This has been a good game. We know how to board for game two a little bit, which is nice. Um, we know about Anger of the Gods and so on. Alright, there's our Snapcaster. I'm just going to fire this up. I have Snapcaster to spell. we got to kill him one way or another, right? Knowing that they have Cryptic Commands in their deck, though, is kind of bad for us, just because that is the card when we're one for wanting resources with each other that just breaks it wide open. That's a nice draw. I actually do not mind drawing Muta Vaults at all. They're attackers. They are immune to sorcery speed removal, which means Anger of the Gods is not an out for them. Uh, we still get to have our Snapcaster Wizards retort up. They want to bounce this and draw a card. I don't really want them to do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to Snapcaster this. Snapcaster Dispel. Uh, we have multiple dispels, so this seems fine here. Okay, well, if this works, I'm assuming our opponent's last hand, last card is bad. Oh my gosh, and then I click through my attack step. Come on, game. Oh, well, fair enough. Alright, let's go ahead and fire these up. Uh, I guess I'm going to move to combat here. Oh, they're just going to let us attack. Okay. I was playing around Cryptic Command a little bit there. Yeah, this would have been a lot better if they were at three, that's for sure. But I was playing around Cryptic Command... Um, and I say that because of my missed attack last turn to put him at three. Not from not firing that up. Cryptic Command would tap all of our creatures, so... Oh, wow, that's that's not a good sign for them. I'm going to let that resolve. That's fine. Yeah, like I said, Mutavolt, very, very good at beating Anger of the Gods. We made that Anger pretty bad for our opponent. And now we get a bottom, a mountain, and draw. Well, we drew a land, but that's okay. Uh, okay, so with that, let's see here. I can... If I fire both of them up, I can't do anything. So I can actually only do one here. Which, to be fair, putting our opponent to three is honestly good enough. So here's the thing. Our opponent goes to three. I have Snapcaster and Wizards Lightning up. So we, we have lethal in a way. Um, now, I'm not going to do anything about it. I think. I think I'm just going to let them spend all their mana and try to hold it. Because it does make sense as they die to Mutavolt to one of the things they could be holding on to are counter spells. So I'm not trying to slow roll here. This is one of those situations where it's actually just correct to, uh, to, to, you know, to slow roll. Now that I have my mana, I'm just going to fire both of these up. This forces a cryptic if our opponent has it. Or even worse for them, they're going to have something else. Or they're just going to die. I guess that's a possibility, too. Yeah, they just died. All right, fair enough. Wow, that was a nice game, actually, against Blue Moon there. That was a, that's probably a tough matchup for us. But also, hey, we you saw the power of cheap counterspells and early threats. That was a nice match overall. There you go, everybody. Mining Modern Is It Wizards. Thank you for watching. Hey, everybody. Here we go with some more Is It Wizards. And I like this start here. Delver of Secrets... And Adeliz and Snapcaster Mage plus a burn spell? This hand could be pretty good. 
Um, I guess it depends on whether or not our opponent has a one mana answer to Delver, and of course how lucky we get with Delver. Uh, I can't say I've played much with Delver in my life. I really haven't. I've played against it plenty, obviously, and um, if I am half as good at my opponent at blind my my opponent says blind flipping Delver, we got a great shot. So we'll see. Oh, my opponent's on Tron. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess that's fine. Come on, let's do it, game. Give me something. Spell Snare. Oh, we did it! We did it. Look at that. It's actually a pretty reasonable one, too, because uh, we didn't have a play on this turn otherwise uh, with the way I did it. At the time, I didn't know my opponent was on Tron. I were just shocked in Steam Vents. And maybe that's the right play regardless. But Spell Snaring... Um, Nothing here. We're supposed to say nothing for the record. But just flipping this Delver when we did is, is very, very good. So next turn we can just play Adeliz, and that's going to be nice. Or, depending on how things go. Wow, my opponent found a second Urza's Tower. Oh, this is so bad for them. Okay. I mean, to be fair, I can't stop anything they're doing now. But if they don't have turn 3 Tron, things get a lot worse. Um... I want to do here probably just play Adeliz and get in for five I could also just plan on bolting and I could fire up Munivolt and bolt that feels worse than just playing Adeliz Adeliz we did it Adeliz the cinder win dominary legendary creature so it's kind of funny it actually has uh, no synergy with insectile aberration I think if I understand how it works this is a human insect not a wizard. This only pumps wizards. All that said, it's a pretty scary card by itself. I'm going to attack for a lot of damage next turn. I think even if my opponent has... Unless they do something about our board right now. Sure, they've, they've Tron next turn. I don't even think that beats us. I think we just have enough burn at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the Mutavolt. And then bolt them. Puts them to nine. Then they take six, nine. They're just dead. They're just dead. All right, we just have lethal. This is pretty sweet because Munivolt has all creature types. It is a wizard. We get to wizards lightning them, triggering Adeliz, giving the Munivolt plus one, plus one, and attacking with three, three power creatures with our opponent at nine life. So if that's not how you play against Tron, that, that's, that's how you do it right there. All right, nine damage. They are dead. All right, game two against Tron. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, these are where those Alpine Moons come in, that's for sure. And Negates. And Ceremonious Rejections. All right, so what we don't need here, I would say our Lava Mancers, I would say they're just really bad. Adelis was sweet there. I don't want to cut it. Uh, Wizard's Retort, I want. I just want all the counter spells, really. Um, a Braid, even, I think is reasonable. I don't want to cut one drops because we just have to have a one drop, basically. I think I can cut the burst lightnings. Uh, maybe cut one of these. And then maybe cut one nimble obstructionist. Obstructionist is, obstructionist is obviously fine uh, to good even. But we have a bunch of three drops already and we're on the draw here. I think Adeliz is better as a haste threat that can come down after a Karn or an Ugin or whatever. Maybe provide the last points of damage. A Braid's actually the one I'm less sure about because maybe we want... We actually want the uh, Soul Scar Mage over the Abraid. Abraid clearly has value. Um, we, I mean, basically all of our all of our answers right now are tied up as uh, counter spells. So maybe that maybe that's just not even true. Maybe I do want the Abraid. I don't know. It's a hard call. The thing is, it basically only answers. I mean, I guess it kind of answers Warm Coil or whatever. But in a lot of ways, it only answers. Um, like a, an Oblivion Zone that they don't pop immediately. You know, or a map on, on whatever, right? So, okay. So, I've never actually played with Alpine Moon here. <laughs> Just for full disclosure. I'm going to go ahead and play this first. Pretty sure I just named Urza's Tower, right? Land your opponent's control with the chosen name. Lose all land types and abilities and they gain one mana. Okay, so yeah. Um, this will stop. It actually makes them lose the land type. So it, it, it is no longer a Tron land for the purposes of Tron, if I understand it correctly. And if I don't, then I have no idea why this was in the sideboard of the 5-0 list. Uh, but I think that's how it works. So we can actually take our opponent off Tron for one mana here and have Opt slash Spell Snare after that, which is 
Uh, pretty solid, actually. Look, I can even name Urza's tower, and then they don't have it. They oh, We have a lot of burn here. I can name Urza's tower, and then even if they have it, uh, I, that way I don't give them green mana. All right, there we go. So we've got, we're just going to pass the turn here. I think this actually might just work out for us, that Soulscar Mage I threw back in at the last second doing work. Um, it obviously depends on what they have, but we just have a lot of burn. I can Wizard's Lightning in the instep uh, if I need to. Well, there, they do have their Urza's Tower. So they have their five-color land. They've got that going for them. No Urzatron, though. No Urzatron ever, so long as Alpine Moon is in play. Of course, they could just Nature's Claim this, and we would lose the game. Probably. they wouldn't. We'd have another turn to try to top deck something with Opt. Um, but hopefully they just go for a two-drop of some kind that we can spell snare. If not, I'll burn them. Uh, feed the clan? I just don't even want to spell snare that. They just want to gain five life? I'm just going to let them gain five life. It's an odd sideboard card. I mean, I see it against burn, and I guess we are similar to burn, so I can see where they, what they were thinking. Um, just going to opt, I think. That does, you know, make it so that I'm less inclined to just try to race them out. I don't think I want the other opt. Alright, hitting a land is actually pretty decent. Don't want any more, but I like this one. Okay, so... Um... Yeah, just play another Soul Scar Mage. It all depends on what they're working with, I guess, is what it's going to come down to. And really how good this, uh, this Spell Snare can be. But think about how much damage we have just sitting on this board right now. I mean, we have six from the Wizard's Lightning. That plus that would be two Prow Sugars on each of those, adding another six damage. So we actually have 12 damage. Our opponent's at a virtual 10, which to be fair is still a lot. But there's a lot of power sitting on our board right now. And we have this Spell Snare Snapcaster. And our opponent's doing nothing, huh? So they might have just kept like a turn three Tron hand that didn't have any, that had ways to pay off Tron, but not any of the, the middle, middle stuff. And I guess I just do nothing again. Wow. Okay, now I'm just going to fire one of these off in my main phase. Or I can pass again. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think it's worth it. I think I want to just do it now. Um. Just for the trigger. In fact, I may as well just do two of them for the triggers. The alternative was doing one of them. Uh, or do, rather doing none of them. And then and the inset... Snap now nah, just this is just better. If I snap cast or opt and then do it so that I have the full amount of power in play or whatever, but I think this is just good enough. Like spell snares all all of our interaction. Our opponent is not gonna interact with our board. We may as well take the damage with the Soul Scar Mages while we have it. Um, since it looks like we're gonna be in a burn them out sort of situation here. Um, so there's just no reason to to get tricky with it. Now you could almost make the argument: Am I really supposed? To, am I supposed to hit them with the other one, or do they have something? Oh wow, they have a an instant speed feed the clan, huh? I actually kind of want to counter this one. I'm going to for a lot of reasons. I mean, one, the spell snare, the spell snare itself, countering feed the clan is 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 five less damage we have to deal. Two, we get two damage out of the spell snare with our soul scar mages here. Are they really have another one? What is going on? Okay. What do I know? They're 13 when it's all said and done, I guess. We still are sitting on eight points. Uh, what is it? This would be four, seven. We have seven points in our hand, plus the Snapcaster Mage. They still need stuff. Ooh, that's a nice one. All right, now I am going to quote unquote get tricky because I can't. It's just Worm Coil, I guess. And I guess it's just Worm Coil that's the problem, but maybe we can figure out a way through it. I get to play Nimble Obstructionist if they tap out for it, and then we might be able to do things where we kill our own creatures after Worm Coil attacks. It's an O-Stone. Okay. Um, I can't counter it, but they can't activate it. Which means 
I think I just go for the kill here. I think I just play Nimble Obstructionist. Or if I play Snapcaster Mage. If I play Snapcaster Mage and Wizard's Lightning, that puts him down to 8. Then I get to attack for 4, plus the other one is 7, 8, 9. So I just have 9 damage. Okay, good enough. I'm just going to go for it. If my opponent blows me out with yet another... <laughs> Uh, the fourth feed the clan or whatever, then they blow us out with the fourth feed the clan. But I think we're going to be okay here. All right, that puts our opponent at eight. And we just have lethal. So we get to uh, we get to do this, put him down to five, and then we get to attack for, uh, for six. Let's see what they got. There we go. We took down Tron. That was... Uh, I can't say I expected three feed the clans. That's for sure. That was that was strong. <laughs> it was uh, um, I mean, obviously worked. We were fortunate. We weren't just all burn. We had creatures, and that Alpine Moon was clutch. It's really one of the best cards in modern against Tron. They've printed what it feels like just infinite hate cards against Tron at this point, and at some point, none of them work. Tron is just always a deck, and the reason is that they've all cost a lot of mana. Whether it's um, three mana for Blood Moon, sort of the, the classic, right? But they, they printed Blood Sun, and they go, oh, well, now it's such on Tron, but it also cycles. That's something, right? Uh, no, they printed uh, Damping Sphere. It's another card, which is good. Damping Sphere is good in Modern, but not just because of a Tron matchup. All of those cards share the problem of just costing too much mana, and even when it's two mana with Damping Sphere, uh, which is closer than, than Blood Moon, I mean, you have to be able to kill Tron. Tron can just play lands, and if you take your third turn off by playing Blood Sun or Blood Moon or whatever, and sometimes even if you take your second turn off by playing Damping Sphere, you just can't kill them before they hit three mana and play their O Stone, and five mana and crack their O Stone, or six mana and play their Warm Coil, or seven mana and play their card. Like sometimes you just lose to it because you take a turn off. But Alpine Moon, one card, one mana, comes down takes care of it for the rest of the game. And as you saw in that game, it was so perfect. We were just able to, to work it into our curve and still apply pressure. Imagine if we had to just take off turn two or turn three um, to to play a Blood Sun or whatever there, a Blood Moon. We just wouldn't have won the game. Uh, maybe we might have won that game. In all likelihood, though, we would have just lost to so many things that just one man Alpine Moon gets it done. And that's why you're seeing Alpine Moon in modern side wards. Works very well against Tron. There you go, everybody. Thanks for watching. All right, here we go with some more Wizards. Now, I can't say I've had a hand like this before. And we're on the draw. I'm going to keep it. I, I don't know, keep in mind, I don't know what I'm doing with this deck. That's the thing, right? I play new decks every week. I'm not super practiced with them. Obviously, I'm going to make mistakes. That's part of it. But uh, it also means just something more simple. You know, maybe somebody who's played this deck for two months knows that this is a mulligan. Uh, but hey, I mean, I have no way of knowing that until I try. So especially on the draw there where we can just hit land and curve out the way we want anyways, I'm going to see what's up when we just go for the, uh, you know, the double opt or whatever. Yeah, I'll just opt now. Nimble Obstructionist, huh? Like the card, got to pitch it, though. We do need to hit land, I would say, pretty desperately here. Um, I certainly thought with the one from the draw, the two from the opt, and the one from the draw, that's four cards, we'd get there. As you can see, we did get there. That said, it's got to be good enough to beat our white-blue control opponent, who's playing one of the better decks in Modern, uh, and has Search for Ascanta. This card just terrifies me. Sometimes it never transforms and doesn't do anything, but... I won't lie to you, this card is terrifying because I guess it's the thing, and this is, I guess, a, a, I think a pretty common phenomenon in Magic, actually, where sometimes a card might be perfectly balanced, but your perception of the card is skewed by playing against it, where it only beats you. So keep in mind, it's very easy to forget the games where your opponent has Search Rest content in hand and you just kill them, or they play it on and then die the next turn. Those games happen, you win, you don't think about it much, but the games you lose to getting drowned out by Ascanta, which we've all been there, feel so bad, it's just horrible. And you're like, gosh, that card's unbeatable because you've never beaten it That you once it's transformed and they've reached that point of the game and you've spent 10 minutes trying and failing to beat it. You forget all the games where you actually beat it. So um, so like I said, maybe my, my perception of Search for Ascanta is just completely off. All right, so I think I'm going to get a little greedy here. I'm going to main phase opt. I really want to hit a land. I want it gives me triggers for the Soul Scar Mage, uh, but I want to pass with Mana Leak open. So I need to hit a land off of this, and there we go. 
I think this is a pretty reasonable position to be in for us right now. Our opponent has four cards in hand. I mean, they're nowhere near transforming search for Ascanta, which is good. Uh, but we also have Mana Leak if they do nothing, um, or if they cast something. If they do nothing, we get an Op. And then next turn, we can play uh, Lava Man plus something. They're just going to do nothing. They did get to bottom a card there, or rather, Graveyard card with their Ascanta. You know, I, I'm going to be honest, I actually think I want Lightning Bolts. I think I just want all the burn possible to try to win this game that way. And hitting a land there is pretty welcome, to be honest. Alright, so let's go ahead and attack with Soulscar Mage and see what happens. Uh, I think I fire off one bolt now. Because that still leaves us Mana Leak plus Bolt. Or rather, Lava Man plus Mana Leak. I think it's just worth getting in the damage while we can. Yeah, and see, they're going to path it. I could mana leak the path. That would be an interesting play. Is that correct? We have to start playing. We have to start playing as cryptic commands or Teferi's next turn. If, on the other hand, we would get in for three damage this turn, put him at eleven, sitting on a bunch of burn. I'm going to take this risky line here, just because. I mean, for all I know, they're just going to counterspell this, and we're still going to get hit. But I think the upside here is good. I think the thing is we want to force we want to be aggressive at forcing through as much damage as possible against our opponent. Um because we're not gonna win the long game against Ascanta. If they basically if they land to fairy, we're in a world of hurt anyways. Um and I could just hold this up for that, but if we, we're not putting any pressure on him, what are we really doing? We are unfortunately going See, and look, this actually worked out. We can't pay two for the logic knot, but we force our opponent to uh to exile their graveyard to Logic Knot, and now Search for Ascanta is just infinitely far away from transforming. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get a, uh, I guess we want a mountain here. And now we get to play, uh, and the other thing is we draw off that path, or, well, we're still in Declare Blockers, okay. We draw off that path, and uh, now we get to play this with a stock-dish graveyard to try to get some damage. All right, so yeah, our opponent is not that near transforming search for Ascanta. They need lands. They need win conditions. They need uh, removal spells. So we're just going to start pinging them with Lava Mancer. I mean, this abrade's not ever going to do much for us, but uh, they're going to snap cast their path us. Well, there you go. They had what they needed to turn the corner. Uh, because now it becomes very difficult for us to win. We can't even hit Muta Vaults because of the Field of Ruin. Uh, I would say that that one might have uh, might have ended the game here. You can see, like I said, <laughs> there's our muta vault. Um, I guess this actually makes our uh, makes our braid do something. So I'll do this now while they're tapped out. So it's a race to win conditions at this point. Unfortunately for us, our opponent has Ascanta working for him. They could also just slam to fairy, and then we'd be real dead. But maybe not. All right, well, nothing to do but fire this thing up and get on in there. This is actually kind of rough because we're out of basics, so Field of Ruin is just straight strip mine. They're so close to transforming Search in in, in, in the game, though. That's the problem. We're going to play this, uh, this Delver of Secrets and hope to get very lucky. I do think it's a winnable matchup. Maybe, I don't even, I don't want to say good, but maybe even good. But like I said, maybe I was supposed to mulligan. Maybe I just really needed to have a turn one play. But they get to transform the, uh, the Search Rest content next turn. Can I do the same with this? I cannot. <laughs> Attack for one with Delver of Secrets. Just what I've always dreamed of. Well, as far as, you know, things go, I guess Lava Mancer is one of the better draws. <coughs> Yeah, there's a Snapcaster path. Like I said, we just have no way of winning this game. <coughs> Excuse me. Our opponent keeps messing with their graveyard to keep from transforming Search, though. I guess we got that going for us, maybe? Just better than Swords of Plowshares. It's just unmake. It's just actual exile. Alright, well. Our opponent left us a Delver? I don't know. Is that good? 
We get a bunch of counter spells in here next round, though. All right, let's see if we can do it with our Delver. Oh my gosh, I am so good at Delver of Secrets. It is truly impressive. All right, our opponent's going to transform Search for Conta, and then it's going to be scoop time. They didn't even play land, so they're not even flooded. They just don't care about our Delver. Maybe they'll keep it and not transform their Search for Conta. <laughs> well, they did. That feels worse. That actually just feels worse. Here comes the fairy. Wow, the greed. All right, let's see if we can untap, if we can transform our Delver if I go over three. Another Delver, huh? It feels bad. That feels bad. All right, we'll attack Teferi. The thing is, even if we kill Teferi, that means they transform Surge. We're just actually dead here, but whatever. We'll give it a try. What is this? Familiar's Ruse? What? And it's an additional cost, so I can't even kill it in response? I'm scooping. You deserve it. You deserve it with that one, friend. That was sick. <laughs> That card is... Oh, you don't even have many creatures in your deck. It's so medium. But man, it's good when it's good. Alright, 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 alright. Alright, blue-white control. There's these counter spells in here. And maybe the surgicals? Maybe not. A braid is very, very bad. Nimble obstruction is actually reasonable. Um, I don't think much of our deck... I mean, I think most of our deck is good. I kind of even like Adela's. I'm going to cut it. Because we just need one drops or whatever. But I do kind of like it. I won't lie. Um, I'm going to cut a Lava Man. Maybe. No, Lava Man's actually pretty decent, I think. I'm going to cut a Burst Lightning. I think this is fine. Teferi, huh? Teferi Modern is so good. Yeah, sweet. We get a mulligan. Now that one I know not to keep. Well, that's probably about as much as we can hope for. Yeah, sure. We just need creatures. That's a one drop. Uh, we're fetching it away. I guess it doesn't matter. All right, our opponent mulligan as well. So that's a start. All right. Well, maybe we'll just go the distance with this Delver of Secrets. I was 0 for 5 or something last game on transforming it. Alright, look at that. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. What are we going to do? Are we going to do it? I did it! <laughs> I did it! I did it, everybody. I can play the game. I can play the Delver of Secrets game. Oh, uh, yeah. That said, hitting Spell Snare there was a disaster. It's In terms of the spell we're going to hit, it was by far the worst. Oh my gosh! Are you kidding? What is this? Oh, we're so dead. White blue control is so good. Terminus is disgusting. I do love that this gets played in modern. I mean, I can't lie about that. It's basically a response to humans and meddling mage, and that you just need ways to, to deal with that or whatever, you know? And Terminus does it, but it's also just sometimes you miracle it like that. All right, well let's let's go find an let's go find a threat. That's a threat. <laughs> it's not the threat I wanted, but it is probably the threat I deserve. All right, it's something. It's something at least. The problem is now we're tapped out. Our opponent is clear to land as Kanta or whatever the heck they want. They can just attention spear us. That's the problem with this wizard's deck. Wall of Omens, huh? That's actually not so bad for us. Soulscar Mage is going to come in handy here, killing us. I was going to say, that's the one thing I've noticed with this Wizards deck, uh, is it seems like the... I'll just do it. No, I won't. I'll, I'll let this happen first. Yeah, that way we can actually kill it here. Um, like I said, the one thing I've noticed is that it, it just has a low creature count. And it doesn't. I mean, it's got eight... That's why you play Soul Scar Mages, right? It's eight one-drops. Um... You, know, you could maybe play Get Two Lava Runner if you want to go more aggressive. I'm not sure. It's 
But the thing is, this deck is very, very good when you have one of those early creatures on board. And other than that, it's not... It struggles. You know, you draw a bunch of burn spells, which is great when you've dealt them 10 damage with a creature. Uh, and it's very much not great when you are, uh, you know, just drawing burn spells and counter spells and can't actually interact with the board. All right, our opponent main face field of ruined us. Um, guess I just needed blue mana. Hey, dispel's actually a nice draw. We really aren't doing much to our opponent here, but dispel's a nice draw. Maybe we keep them from doing stuff. I mean, most of their good plays outside of Teferi, um, you know, queue up Teferi, obviously, but outside of Teferi, most of their good plays are two mana. Um, Snapcaster, Ascanta, that sort of thing. Let's see. Timely reinforcements, huh? I can't do anything about that. It's just going to crush us. All right, let's see you, Snapcaster Mage. Well, let's see what our opponent does for blocks here. This could work out okay for us. If they triple, if they just chump, sure. If they triple block, we can blow them out. If they double block, I can still blow them out. Yeah, they're going to triple block. Great. All right, so I will just lightning bolt this thing. This should actually mean that we, outside of the life, are going to trade our lightning bolt for their timely reinforcements, which isn't the worst. Uh, lightning bolt will kill that soldier. We then have a 2-3 Soul Scar Mage. Let's see what our opponent does here. And they're going to try to counter this with something that gets Spell Snared. It's going to feel good. They know we have Spell Snare for what it's worth. We revealed it to Delver of Secrets on turn 2. Alright, so what's the converted mana cost of this? It's 2, right? Oh god, I don't know the answer. I'm going to look it up real quick. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> going to take a small break. All right, I'm looking this up. You're going to learn along with me. Okay, that's what I thought. It is CMC of not two. It is more. On the stat... That's a... I, see, I, I'm actually a judge. I'm a no one judge, but I just wanted to double check there. Um, so I have to dispel this. On the stack, X has a cost. Um, not on the stack, it's always zero. So the CMC of Logic Knot is actually zero, except in the circumstance where uh, our opponent has Logic Knotted a spell, in which case the CMC of the card is like, you know, four or whatever it was there. I'm going to spell snare that. We have to be able to get in with this Soul Scar Mage. And this, sure, we're going to get remanded, I guess. That's not the end of the world, I suppose. Oh, they remained their own their own wall. Okay. Sure. Same same difference, I guess. They get a wall in place. It's still pretty good for them. I mean, they're so far ahead right now. All right. Well, I'm gonna attack and I'm gonna snap cast or bolt because I just have to have creatures. I think. Maybe that's just incredibly greedy. Maybe that's just like way too greedy. I don't know. It is very greedy. On the other hand, our opponent has five cards in hand. Do we think we can ever beat them? Even if I kill this, they can just keep up free. I mean, heck, they can just keep up Celestial Colonnade to block at that point. That timely reinforcements earlier was very good for them. Um, yuck. It feels so bad to Snapcaster this thing. I think I just have to let it happen and just pass. Or maybe I can opt here. And I want Snapcaster to spell up. I'll just opt in the answer. I think, given the fact our opponent's at 19 life, and has a wall, and has a colonnade, I'm forced to try to grind them out. Which obviously feels terrible, because our deck doesn't do that very well compared to a blue-white control. Um, but I don't think we have any other option at this point. I kind of don't want that, to be honest. It's fine, I guess, but I don't really want it. I mean, I don't want that either, but... Seeking mana into mana leak every turn wasn't really going to do us much. Alright, well, mana leak might work. If they go for a Teferi, this, we could actually get them here. They want a Field of Ruin us, sure. 
It's actually fine. Slightly improve our draw step. I'm in. I don't feel good about winning. I am just because, I mean, this is where blue-white control wants to be right now. And they get to set up their draws just like we do. Um, but their draws are going to be a little more high impact than all, than our soul scar mages and so on. They just drop to fairies. But we're going to do what we can here. The problem, like I said, the problem is this deck just doesn't have any creatures. Like, what are we even hoping to draw? I mean, I guess I know what I'm, I'm hoping to draw a burn spell so that I can kill the wall and start trying to attack, but... It's just, it's just not a great spot to be in right now. I have all the counter magic. I'm going to keep them from doing anything. But we're not able to capitalize on it. Because this deck has, has a real problem not having enough creatures. Now, here comes the fairy. Six. What, main f Elspeth? I'm going to negate that. Actually, I'm going to mana leak that. Okay. They have their own Dispel, huh? I can't Spell Snare it. So I'm just going to end up negating it. Okay, that's fine. So much prowess on our Soul Scar Mage. I'm on the wrong turn, though. Oh, well, we stopped Elspeth. I guess that's a start. Just give me a Lightning Bolt so I can kill this stupid wall. We caught a little bit of our break with our opponent actually tapping out there. Ooh. You know what? Nimble Obstructionist is just fine. Let me keep representing this. Make him think about it. You know, maybe they have two cards in hand here. If they're all air, I mean, if they just have a bunch of nothing cards and we play this Obstructionist with Spell Snare open, maybe, maybe that does something. Wow, they're going to fire up the Colonnade. That's what they're going to do. That is aggressive. I mean, I'm going to make an odd play here, but I'm going to play Snapcaster Mage, and I'm just going to bolt this thing with the Soul Scar Mage to put counters on it, makes it a 1 1, and then it's just not a threat. We also even get to keep Spell Snare open. This is kind of cute with the Soul Scar Mage out. I can't block it, but it, I mean, it does make it pretty useless as a blocker as well, which is kind of nice. I didn't get my Nimble Obstructionist in play, but that's okay. I have attacks now. And I'm going to Spell Snare the heck out of that thing. Alright, well our opponent's down to two cards in hand. If their best player is firing up Colonnade, maybe we're going to get to try to do something here. Uh, now I find the Bolt, obviously. That's fine. Thing is, now I'm actually attacking for damage. Uh, I guess I want to do this now because I want the point out of the Soul Scar Mage. Um, if we get blown out or whatever by them pathing our snap cap, they they are going to do that. Oh, they're going to path our. Okay, they're going to path our Soul Scar Mage actually. The problem for them here, I mean, it, I get the idea. It keeps counters from going on the wall, but the Lightning Bolt and the Snapcaster are just going to kill the wall anyways. Which means, through it all, look at that. Heck, our opponents at two... It, it, we have a creature, they have two cards in hand. Maybe those cards are bad. Or maybe they're ops, but... <laughs> well, let's see here. Teferi, huh? Okay. Well, it certainly resolves. I can, I can nimble obstructionist its ability. I can nimble obstructionist the ability, or I can let it resolve, hope that they whiff, and attack it with the nimble obstructionist to kill it. And I think that's the correct play. Because otherwise we're, you know, we've cool, we've cycled, we got value or whatever, but we, we did, they're still just going to get, unless we rip burn, they're still going to get to use Teferi. And this, we put, a, we put a thread into play this way, and if they whiffed on cards, then we actually get to kill it. 
And in fact, drawing Snapcaster Mage means I think we're actually probably favored here to actually take Teferi off the board. We're just going to grind through Teferi? Wow, we really are. Okay, pass the turn with Snapcaster Mage open. Somehow we are out grinding our opponent. Although that may be about to change with that Supremo Verdicto. It's pretty good. Sorry, I have a friend who plays this card. He always calls it Supremo Verdicto because he has a uh, Spanish version of it. All right, so I think I'm just going to Snapcaster for... I don't even know if I want to call this value, but I have to have a creature. I have to be able to attack. So I'm going to opt. This obviously, you know, feels kind of bad. I wanted to Snapcaster a removal spell, but got a counter spell, and it would have been so good, except I can't do that with... With Supreme Verdict. It was just the perfect card there. We were going to attack. This Lava Mancer could do some work. We certainly have a stocked graveyard. You could maybe make an argument that I wanted to take the opt there. Um, you know, I guess the problem with the opt is that it's good. Or, I'm sorry, with the with the dispel there with the opt. But if they, it, the problem with the dispel is it stops a lot of their cards. But there's a whole bunch of the cards it doesn't stop that would just kill us anyways. So, I think it's correct to be greedy, because their top decks are just so much better than ours. As are the cards in their hand, most likely. Detention Sphere, our Lava Man. Yep. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, we kind of did it in the sense... Oh my gosh. Well, that was the killer. Their top decks are just so much better than ours. I mean, we had Snapcaster Mage as a good top deck, and we did it, and we opted, uh, and then we hit two lands, so... Dispel wouldn't have stopped this. They're going to fire up their Colonnade and trade with our with our Snapcaster. I don't really think I could do anything about that. I don't think it's worth holding back. Alright, so... Whoa, I don't know what happened there. We just skipped all the way to their end stuff, huh? Okay. Well, I guess Obstructionist is pretty good. Maybe I'll play my land. I don't know if there's a reason not to. Don't think they're really going to play around anything. They're just going to slam whatever they have. <laughs> I could cycle the wall of omen. Cycle and get the wall of omen's trigger. This would be so much easier if they were at 10 life. Oh no. Oh no. Search for Azkanta. Alright, we'll play our nimble obstructionist out. See what happens. I think we're gonna fall here. I think we think this. We're not long for this world. But maybe we rip a Snapcaster Mage and have a shot. I don't think Negate's going to be good enough. It's certainly better than nothing, and I mean, heck, depending on what our opponent actually does, both with their Search for Ascanta and with wood, what, with whatever else, who knows, maybe we get Negate a key spell and get a couple hits in with the Nimble Obstructionist. Search is just so good, though. See, and this is what I was talking about. Now they found Ascanta and they just know that I can't win. Oh my gosh, come on, game. Two miracles in one match? Like, actual miracles? Get out of here. Oh, I'm floating the mana to scare my opponent here. Maybe they won't cast it. I think they're probably going to cast it. Is this on the stack now? Yeah. All right. This is just so insane because now they get to activate Ascanta and to get to do... Oh, we're just dead. All right. Yeah, they get it. They get to activate Ascanta. They get to untap. They get to even have three mana for whatever they find. Plus, they get to untap. Right, we're pretty dead here. To be fair, I didn't ever think we were gonna win after they cast that timely reinforcements. I mean, we gave it a we gave it our best shot, but it's just such a lopsided matchup. I feel like, I mean, it's just I just don't think there's any way we 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 are favored in the matchup. They just have so much removal. They have removal we can't even interact with. Supreme verdict. Um, they have the long game timely reinforcements after sideboard. I mean, at least if they were at seven life, we could wizards lightning them down to four and hope to draw burst lightning and hope that they have nothing. Um, but, uh, yeah, they have Logic Knot now, so. Alright, well, that's one of the few cards that'll make me not scoop here. Snapcaster Mage. On what? Just to, just to opt, really? Okay. Just have Ascanta, you don't need to do this. Wow, that familiar's ruse in game one. That was A plus. I enjoyed that. 
That was nice. That was a really tech play. It's and I guess the idea is if you're playing blue white control, then uh, I mean you're playing blue white control. You have plenty of cards all the time, right? Right. So I mean, why wouldn't you get the value out of it? You you can just hold it until you have Snapcaster Mage and then do it. Um, but I'm sure there are games where it's pretty bad. All right, our opponent's gonna counter our obstructionist here. <laughs> oh, they got another time. All right, this game's over. They get a logic not our obstructionist. And then cast timely reinforcements. Oh, I guess they don't even gain life. I guess timely reinforcements is an actual blank right now. They don't even gain life off of it. But something tells me it's still going to be good enough. Alright, I will decline to pay five for your logic knot. Well, you can't say we didn't get to play plenty of magic. We got our money's worth here. We played a long game. Unfortunately, it was a long game that ended in defeat. Look at the velocity. Our opponent just tearing through their deck with all these card draw spells. Down to 20 cards in library after they draw here. I'm make that 19 after they draw. They've just seen everything at this point. All right, well... I guess it, I like that we were able to kill a celestial colonnade though. That made me happy. All right, there's a creature they can't logic not. What is this? As Conte again? Maybe they'll run out of cards in their library. Familiar's ruse. Oh no, the value. <laughs> no, no, it's not fair. All right, I refuse to get Familiar's ruse again. I'm scooping. That's it. It's over. We're not winning this. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, everybody. Is it Wizards? Guilds of Ravnica is out. I just got back from the World Championship when I'm recording this. Um, I actually heard somebody told me that uh, that uh, the stream, some people recognized me during the finals when I was out there covering the match. So that was kind of cool. Um, that's I'm, I'm at all these these pro events. You know, I'm at 15 Grand Prix a year and three to four pro tours or whatever. And uh, I'm part of the coverage team, but if you're not on camera, no one ever knows about it. So I, I occasionally get my cameos there during the drafts when I'm sitting over someone's shoulder recording it or when I get to sit and watch the finals. And that's always fun. I enjoy that. So um, shout out to, I guess, whoever whoever on Twitch was like, hey, that's Corbin. It's always kind of fun, especially for me. I'm not used to that sort of thing, so it was nice. Uh, anyways, everybody, thank you for watching. I will see you all next week. This was a lot of fun. Hey, everybody, here we go with the deck tech for Blue Red Wizards. So... Jeff Hoogland played this to the top eight of an SCG Open a few months ago. It also has been putting up some 5-0s on Magic Online. So here's the deck. It is Wizards Modern. Uh, it's actually all the cards in here have been out since uh, Dominaria, and it's just kind of picked up steam since then. The big one, of course, Wizards Lightning. It's another Lightning Bolt. You have eight Lightning Bolts in this deck, thanks to Wizards Lightning, as long as you control Wizards. So plenty of Wizards. Delver of Secrets, the strongest Wizard of them all in Eternal Formats. Um, maybe Snapcaster Mage, <laughs> but, uh, we've got Delver of Seekers, we've got Snapcaster Mage, there's everything you expect there, but hey, we've got more, we've got Soul Scar Mage. I did not expect this Almond Cat card to make it into Modern, yet here we are. It's a wizard, I mean, with as many spells as this deck plays, it gets a hit for a fair amount sometimes. Uh, we've also got one I love, Nimble Obstructionist, a 3-1-3, 3-1 Flyer, 4-3, with Flash, which is, I mean, not great, fine, but I mean, hey, Vendillion, click his card that gets played and kills people. Nimble Obstructionist... When you cycle it, three mana to cycle, you can counter an activate your trigger ability. In today's meta, where you can hit, um, you know, KCI decks, you can hit Aether Vial, I guess, if you really needed to against humans, something like that, but really Tron, you know, Planeswalkers. This actually just has a lot of value. Nice card here, really brings it together. Even got a Wizard's Retort. It's a counter spell when you have a wizard. Wizards, wizards quite a bit in this deck. And heck, an Adelis, because why not? Gotta have the flavor. Um, so to support that, basically what you expect, we've got ops to set up Delvers and so on. We've got spell snares, mana leaks. Uh, just, you know, a counter spell suite, uh, but the cheap ones. And then a couple Grim Lava Mancers, another wizard. It's a one drop, but also removal, along with a braids. And then along with, like I said, remember we have a million lightning bolts. Four wizards lightning, four actual lightning bolts. And a couple burst lightning. So we have ten... 12 if you count a braid kill spells for creatures we've got one drops we've got value and snapcaster major we've got card selection with opt and we've got uh atalus for fun so moving on to the sideboard 
Uh, here is probably the best red card against Tron. That's a weird thing to say as a cyborg card, Alpine Moon. Now, if you're playing an actual Blood Moon deck, then, you know, your deck's built to play with Blood Moon, but Alpine Moon, as your cyborg need to beat hate, need to beat Tron hate card, actually works very well. Um, it turns off, it stops the card from being a Tron land. It gets to make any color, but it means they can never hit Tron uh, as long as this is in play. So, uh, it's pretty sweet. Most importantly, it only costs one mana, so it doesn't mess with your game plan all that much. It's pretty easy to find one mana, unlike something more expensive. So, uh, that makes sense. We've got more counter spells. Negate dispels for the uh, control and combo matchup. Ceremonies rejection uh, for your Tron and your... Uh, I actually forgot to board these in against Tron earlier. Whoops, didn't matter one anyways. But uh, your Tron and your Eldrazi type matchups. This is Static Caster for the creatures. Same with Magnus Praise and Roast when you got to beat creatures. So there you go, everybody. That's the deck. Is it Wizards? Heck, we're even playing Mutavolts. That's a wizard. Thanks for watching, everyone.